Okay, sorry about the uh, delay. Turns out Arch Linux really doesn't like projecting anything, ever. Uh, so we're going to talk a bit about uh, our experience uh, writing um, a Node.js application in the YRS Hack Week and beyond. So, um, yeah, okay. So this is us. I'm Milo, and that is Harry. There are Twitter names and complete personalities. Um, so the project idea was to build um, a representation of Britain inside a game engine um, and plot various bits of data on top of uh, that Britain, uh, that virtual Britain inside the game engine. So these are sort of the bits of data we're using. So in the prototype, we were using Forecast.io to get weather information for real-time weather stats, depending on where you were. So if you were on Snowden, then it might be raining, in which case that would be reflected by your world. And then we had sort of crime statistics, so uh, bandits would appear, um, depending on the, on the crime stats of that area. And uh, in the new one, it's in 3D, so we've got um, altitudes and geolocation. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so uh, this is the slightly broken 2D prototype we made at YRS late at night. And uh, it uses WebGL using a library called uh, Pixie.js, which is an interesting library, which attempt it makes sort of uh, getting a WebGL context on a web page easy and then having the renderer all set up ready for you makes writing the game engine supposedly easier. Turns out you can't write a game engine in a week anyway, but um, it's, it's all right. Um, and the wonderful website, Pixel Map UK, which uh, is a scale map of Britain where each pixel represents one kilometer, which is very useful for plotting models of Britain in video games. Um, yeah, so the way this works, the one we're about to demo, is that uh, the world is organized into different chunks of, um, I think, 14 by 20 tiles or something stupid. And then. Um, there's a node server on the back end, which uh, when the client says, hey, I need this chunk that the guy is trying to look at, then it sends you that data and it loads, so you don't load the whole of Britain at once, because that'd be insane. Uh, it's unfortunately just single player. So yeah, I'm going to try and demo that now. OK, I'll just try and get that up for you. <laughs> ah. Yep, it's looking very it's, broken. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So, um, you can't even move. Oh, you can move. Okay, here we go. So, here's, uh, here's London. And as you can see, the uh, cloud cover in London is existent, and therefore there are clouds. Uh, <laughs> this is obviously a complete scale representation of the city. Uh, so, basically, when you load the web page, we tried to use the HTML5 geolocation thing to get the person's location. Uh, so, it's tried to spawn us where we are in real life. Yeah. Uh, it should yeah, be and it list. did. So we are in London. Well, Hopefully. Yeah. And you can sort of get in your sense prize. Or, Just added in a scholarship enterprise for quick there's, travel. There's, there's the uh, aforementioned bandits looking menacing there uh, that exist on a different dimension or plane to you. And then, um, yeah. Um, that's pretty much the prototype. <laughs> uh, Um, so this is what we learned from that harrowing experience is don't try and build a game engine in a week. Don't try and plot the entirety of Britain in said engine. Uh, sleeping less does not equal better code. And um, JavaScript is not C++, so you can't sort of do that. Um, yeah, it wasn't a great experience. But um, we came out of it um, and decided to do it all again, but in 3D, because that's obviously going to be easier. <laughs> So <laughs> phase two is building it in Voxel.js, which is a pretty cool technology, actually. Um, a lot of it was written by Substack, who is in attendance. <laughs> Yay. Uh, and it's much the sort of the same thing, but without as many broken features and a couple of features which actually sort of work. Um, <laughs> well, 
basically voxel js yeah. for anyone who doesn't know is pretty much a voxel based world a bit like minecraft which runs in your browser yeah so it's sort of like sort of like minecraft as harry said um so but you can hack on it really easily because minecraft you obviously can't hack on because it's closed source boo but uh yeah and it's all in node.js too so. yeah so um, after YRS, because we didn't really know much about building online games, we decided to build a couple of online games, <laughs> such as Connect4 and Pong, which then qualified us to build an online MMO in 3D. Um, <laughs> so moving on. Oh, then this happened. Yeah. Uh, Ordnance Survey came out when I was working on building this, that they'd built this in Minecraft, which was cool, if slightly annoying. But... I stole their data, so it all worked out okay in the end. <laughs> and we're doing it in JavaScript anyway, so it's supposed to be better. Ah, yeah. uh, yes, here, demo two. It's open. Uh, not you again. Oh, you need to run it. It's not host, yeah. So this should load any second, we hope. Yes. OK. Just any second any, now? Any second now. We should be chilling on Snowden. Any minute now. Oh, here we are. Yay. OK, so here is Snowden. And it's actually a block. Each block represents 50 meters cubed. Uh, and the heights are all uh, real as well, taken from the OS data set. Um, so what we're doing is all the heights are stored as JSON files on the server. And then uh, the client sort of asks for a specific JSON file, depending on their latitude and longitude, and then nodes sort of hands that over and you get this, which is, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's also it's actually multiplayer, so we can do this. Uh, basically what Nude was doing was it was not only hosting the, oh, yes. Uh, also the weather is, oh, well, yes. I say real time, it's every five minute it updates, but apparently if you every check, and it should be raining in Mount Snowden right now. Yes. Emphasis no, no, on the I, should. It is raining on Mount yeah. Snowden right now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> right, so it should be multiplayer. I'll just well, see it if is I'm, multiplayer. It is multiplayer. <laughs> Everything I'll works. I'll see if I can find Milo. Yeah, try and sort of refresh it. Turns out that Britain's quite big, so it's quite hard to find other people. Um, Working perfectly as always. Anyway, let's just go to London. <laughs> I'll sort everything out. Okay. So we've uh, added in a uh, teleport command where you can go to coordinates of your choice. Yeah. So you uh, can say. At the moment, we are planning to build cities. Well, not quite block by block, but have structures which are generated in voxels. Although at the moment we just sort of have a placeholder for it. Yeah. Uh, so this is. Well, this in itself is still a work in progress, so we're hoping to improve on it. Well, it turns out there isn't much data on cities that's readily available and easy to use. Mm, yeah, that was... Oh, the great, someone's uh, joined the uh, server. <laughs> 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 that's wonderful. DDoS Harry's Mac, please. <laughs> um, yeah, so I spent quite a while looking for um, data to use to build cities more accurately in actual places, but... Um, it's, it's really quite hard. And so oh, here we go. That is obviously <laughs> London. That's the London you know and love. Um, so yeah, right now we're just sort of, uh, well, Harry, you can explain how we're plotting cities. You wrote the wonderful algorithm. Yeah. So as we couldn't find a reliable method of finding out the latitude and longitude of cities, we were forced to do it on sort of a county basis. So the current algorithms we have in place looks at the population density of the county and generates cities, towns, and villages of size appropriate. So, of course, London has a very large city at its center. So we didn't, we didn't input where to put it. It worked it out itself. 
Yeah. We like to call that technique basing data on real data. Um, and this is sort of the result. But I definitely, uh, I've got a couple of ideas as to how we might uh, do cities more accurately. Oh, hello, party dry. <laughs> right. Let's just go back to the presentation now. There you go. So um, this is what we learned from this new endeavor, that Britain does look pretty cool when it's done in Minecraft. Um, but efficiently loading 575 megabytes of data from text is not that efficient ever. But yeah. Um, yeah, I can't understand the OS grid properly. Uh, it's really weird the way they do the uh, square assignments. They like do one for every letter of the alphabet except I, and that pretty much sums up their system. Um, <laughs> yeah, as I said before, no decent data on cities as of yet. Um, yeah, so we actually use a JS script to uh, export the data in the first place from the uh, OS the ASCII grids to JSON. So each JSON file is 100 kilometers squared of JSON, of, um, of land, and then uh, each section of that land, as assigned by the national grid, uh, is um, 100 meters. Basically, we wanted to get it into a system which did include the letter I and other such conveniences. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just like JSON. Um, yeah, the weather data, as Harry said, it's just querying forecast IO every five minutes and then taking back the result. Uh, that's pretty simple, really. Um, yeah, the other thing about using Voxel.js, which was cool, was that there's a lot of modules already written, and they're really easy to hack on, because they're all quite small and modular as their modules, which makes them quite easy to read and understand and change. Like, the, all the weather that we're doing is based on the Voxel snow, and we just, like, uh, edited over that. Yeah, so the, no the node package manager definitely made our lives a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> both on the client side and the server side. It's really good. Um, browser files is fantastic for um, developing client stuff as well. Uh, what it's saying about the JSON on that slide is that in the beginning, especially for Datamon, we had the data generated through Java, uh, which then exported into JSON. <laughs> oh, yes. um, and basically, Node.js served the client with the JSON, yeah. which worked well. Well, we're still doing that. Actually, um, yeah. Luckily, um, there was already a voxel multiplayer alpha project um, written by Max Ogden, uh, which was useful. So we just sort of uh, hacked on that and modified that, rather than building our own 3D engine MMO, which of course we were ready to do. Um, yeah, Node packages are fantastic. Make uh, writing modular code easy, and uh, distributing it easy too. Um, and having the client and the server written in the same language is very convenient for just everything mm. ever. Uh, and Beefy is pretty cool, um, which is basically a node server which runs and then uh, every time a client connects to it, it serves up a what's called a bundle of JavaScript. So it goes through your JS files looking at the require statements and then concatenates them all into one file and sends the client just that one uh, file of um, JS, which is really good for developing and keeping everything nice and separate and easy without going into sort of including scripts in specific orders in HTML, which is hard when you have about 50 scripts. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we're definitely not finished. Uh, this is a prototype, as you can probably tell. Um, so proper cities, uh, land features like the OS um, ordnance survey one that they produced, um, stuff like weaponry, crime, yeah, animals, um, and just make it better so we don't have that massive delay when the client's waiting on that piece of JSON. 
uh, so optimize that that data loading and the rendering as well. I don't think we really notice, but there's a big blue line that appears down the middle of the screen, and no one knows why. Uh, <laughs> pretty much sums up my expertise there. Um, yeah. So thanks for listening.